Did we underestimate the scabbards? Well, One Piece chapter 992 is a marvel for several reasons and we get to the scabbards but one thing I really enjoyed about it was Big Mom and her dialogue from the chapter man. It is so good sometimes you're seeing a glimpse of what made her so feared throughout the One Piece world and hold on though before you group me in with the people who by default call Big Mom garbage because she's an idiot demon child sometimes. I'm not one of those people. I quite enjoy the danger she presents while being unpredictable and also more doable than even Kaido at this point. I think. But speaking of big bad Oni Kaido, guys, can we chill on calling him trash? It is literally taking everything the scabbards have under a full moon via some Odin PTSD to land hits on Kaido. But I'm not going to be fraudulent and act like I expected this much out of the scabbards, but Kaido is still in his dragon form, using one attack. He's honestly still coasting and they're going all out. But I suppose that does raise some questions, right? Based off expectations, is Kaido disappointing or are the scabbards overachieving? There is another option that I've seen a lot of and I won't completely dismiss it, but there's the clamor of inconsistency in Oda's writing. Spoiler alert, I'm not leaning to that side at all just based off numerous things but this does and I don't want to use the word exposed but I suppose it highlights a very interesting byproduct of reading One Piece for so long. It's something we're very aware of and it's expectations. How we set them, how the story sometimes fails to meet them but you know at the end of the day you have expectations. So face value when it comes to the Yonko, the Admiral, Supernova and even the Scabbards, you can come to pretty drastic stances not only based off what you want but the highlights and even lowlights of some of these characters. Okay what do I mean? Well time and time again I see people draw conclusions based off of very limited information. Now that's how the story is set up. You know mystery and intrigue. This keeps the train going. And the issue isn't necessarily the soft conclusions if I might add because at times I've placed characters in certain buckets based off of limited information using context and how I see the story progressing. For instance Dragon. I've consistently had Dragon in my top 5 strongest characters in One Piece and his greatest feat so far is restraining pre-time skip smoker. But knowing who he is, knowing his goal and what it would take to accomplish that, lineage, etc, I don't think is that crazy of an assumption. The issue comes in when the story provides context and shows what the reasons for said outcomes are and you just don't like or agree with it. Which is okay too by the way, you have that right. But not agreeing, then instantly calling it garbage, not because it doesn't make sense but because you don't agree is problematic. Again though I want to be clear, disagreeing with the way a story is progressing is not bad or wrong, everyone has their preferences and expectations. Just try not to shit on whatever story when it doesn't follow said prediction, it's straight up toxic man. And it's funny because people knowing that I power scale from time to time after chapters like 992, they flood the comments assuming I'll be angry, not understanding power scaling at least for me always comes from characters being on neutral ground and it's always 1v1. Yeah you try to adjust for nuance and matchups but in One Piece fights don't occur that way. So just had to say based on how many complaints I've seen about Kaido and expectations and it's crazy because while I was watching football the other day and I realized in outcomes in football there's always caveats. No matter what every week even for basketball there's always caveats could be injuries, weather, matchups example. So there's never a situation in which two teams are going up against each other 100% neutral ground is always some advantage for you know either team in some way right and that's the way in One Piece where fights occur and normally there are advantages for you know either person or for both in certain circumstances and you just have to overcome that. You do have outliers though like planned fights that I guess for the position of fleet admiral like Akainu and Aokiji I would say that was neutral ground and nobody really had an advantage maybe Akainu because of devil fruit but then when you look at actual science you know, based on some people magma isn't affected by ice in that way it's a weird thing but you can try to justify anything if you look deep enough. Anyway back to the topic at hand just take the story as it goes. But moving on with expectations and the scabbards versus Kaido I'm asking you yet again did we underestimate them? Are the scabbards really this strong? Well let's go through it a bit and see if things add up. Shall we? Okay, so what's the situation? Right now the scabbards are all fighting Kaido. Every single one. Well, I guess except Kondro, but let's start with him even though he's not here. He's a good example of a character who didn't show much in regards to combative prowess until he absolutely needed to. Kondro throughout the story from when we got introduced to him had been portrayed to be a substandard devil fruit user. I mean everyone who came across his work made comments on how terrible his artistry was. Never mind the fact that he used hockey to attempt to stop the birdcage, his combative prowess was in all fairness I think associated with his atrocious art. It makes sense to me. But now, now, we know a bit more. Kondro who is presumed to be either the weakest scabbard or the most uninteresting turned out to be maybe the most interesting? 
and also quite powerful. Not only was he acting, due to his stage play background and the fact that he was a Kurozumi and working for Orochi, he was drawing with the wrong hand. When we finally caught a glimpse of Kondo's true power, it was clear that anything, literally anything was possible with him and his now very interesting devil fruit power. So that's just one example. To Kinemon, I'll admit, a very strange and difficult character to gauge, and that's based off how his introduction went. We literally met him in pieces, and so hearing that he lost to Law, and we saw his torso fight Brook, which I think was very impressive, I think we came to some swift conclusions about Kinemon. Were we incorrect? A bit, I suppose? Because here's the thing, Kinemon showed promise from time to time, but never really showed just how truly powerful he was. It was always a question. We can't ignore the moment where he showed a special technique by cutting fire, but it was honestly hard to scale him. There's also a moment in Dressrosa, right, where some of Doflamingo's minions were chasing after Kinemon, and he ran to Sanji and literally asked him to defeat them for him. He then requested for Sanji to accompany him to the House of Toys, and this alone isn't saying Kinemon couldn't defeat these guys, but it was pretty telling that Sanji called them chumps. But there is more context that I think sometimes people forget. He said that those were the ones who took Kondra a prisoner and that he couldn't attack them. It's all very interesting when you look back at it, but things become a lot more clearer once we get to Wano. We find out about their history and time travel and Kazuki Odin, Odin being a major part because normally the leader says a lot about their subordinates, right? Like for instance, Doflamingo and his subordinates. Like they're fairly powerful, but based on how strong Dofi is, there's gonna be a pecking order. Odin at the time he fought Kaido was obviously around his level, right? And if Odin had stayed alive and we fast forward 20 years, he's competing with any of the current top tiers in the story. And also, this may be a hot take, but if you factor in how special Odin truly was, while in regards to having that it factor that we've seen from Luffy, and even Ace, Roger, and Whitebeard, he may have been rivaling the likes of Whitebeard and Roger in their primes. Yes, I know, a bold stance, but I did say hot take, right? Anyway, the point was, if he had such potential, what about his subordinates? We saw how strong Kiku is with the blade, Kamatsu being a fishman while being skilled with the blade and surviving in prison for so many years, Denjiro, whose facial structure changed from sheer rage, had 20 years to train and prepare. Not to mention he casually sliced ships and stopped our favorite Marimo with little to no effort. What about Ashura Doji, who made Jack do the shoulder lean and survived in Wano under Kaido's watch for 20 years? He was even recruited by Kaido. Even Raizo, the ultimate ninjutsu user with insane techniques that could catch anyone off guard. And that's something I think people don't factor in sometimes, is just how catching someone off guard is a big deal. Like for Odin, that's how he was defeated. For Sanji, going up against Doflamingo, not knowing what his devil food power is. Even Jozu got caught by Doflamingo. Apu and how he caught Zoro and Luffy off guard, not knowing his power. So for Raizo, if he pulls out this scroll thing, you attack him and then he gets you back with your own attack, how could you plan for that? So for Kinemon, getting caught off guard by someone like Law with his devil food power, I mean, there's a lot of nuance here with the scabbards. We also cannot forget the Dukes, Inirashi and Nekomamushi, who were clearly strong enough individually to hold off a commander for hours. So if you factor in their ultimate form, they should be easily approaching first commander caliber for that period of time. It may be short, but they're easily on that level. But back to Denjiro really quickly. We cannot forget how he was the man who was pegged by some to be Zoro's fight based off of betrayal, and some expect Zoro to be around right hand man caliber by the end of Wano. So if Ashura Doji, who I scaled to around Denjiro, is around that strength, this is just, you know, how I'm looking at things, Kaido's currently facing off against at least four right hand commander caliber individuals, and that's if we highball, right? And I didn't even mention Izo with his experience and prowess. So yeah, I'm highballing all these characters, but we have no idea how strong they are, but based off what we've seen, it looks like they're around that level, man. There's a lot going on, but when you think about it all, this isn't that shocking, especially when you consider that Kaido hasn't really tried that much yet. What I mean is, we haven't seen Thunder Bagua, Kaido is clearly stronger when he's in his human form, we're anticipating a hybrid form, we know how Oda likes to save the special things for last or later, even Katakuri versus Luffy, he had that donut form the entire time, and Luffy had Snake Man the entire time. We didn't see that till the very end of the fight. If both those guys pulled out those ultimate forms at the beginning, I mean the fights just wouldn't be as interesting, right? So right now Kaido's just spamming Borrow Breath and for now it makes sense, man. Let's not panic 
or get ahead of ourselves, we definitely underestimated the scabbers because none of them really ever showed their best stuff. Okay, wait, let me, I definitely underestimated the scabbers because someone in the comments is going to be like, no, we, no, no, you underestimated the scabbers, Brago. I always knew they could defeat admirals and such. Shut up. Just shut up. I, I hate you guys. But anyway, that's currently how I feel about the situation. They're doing their thing and it's very impressive. This is about Kaido a little bit because I think there's a lot more that Kaido can do, but just give the scabbers their credit. They're doing their thing. But guys, give me thoughts. How do you feel about it? Did we underestimate the scabbards or Kaido's just being trash right now? Or is Oda inconsistent with his writing and scaling of these characters? You know where I stand. Let me know where you stand. But yeah, that's it. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate everybody supporting the videos with the likes and comments. Please continue to do so because that helps out so much. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at BragoDace and follow me on Instagram Bragu.ace. That also helps me out a lot. Thank you to my patrons. I appreciate you guys so much. But yeah, like and subscribe. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.